Hello and welcome to beautiful Geneva. It's such a shame this city speaks French. I'm here at the AIIA festival, a crossover between AI and arts and creativity. And uh, yeah, it's cool to attend in-person events again. And it's especially cool that they are inside the borders of the country I happen to be in. Even if it's in kind of the part of the country that we don't regularly go to. For those of you who don't know, Geneva is at the very, very tip of Switzerland. Switzerland looks kind of like a pig, and Geneva is the tail end of the pig. Though I like to think of it as sticking a little middle finger out to France. The AIIA Festival is a festival that brings together AI and art. It consists of things like exhibitions, artists' performances, discussion panels, of which I was invited to some to speak even as a technical expert on AI. The festival largely revolves around an AI called Chimera or Chimera that has been especially created for the artists to work with. Chimera is an integration of language models, image models and audio models and the artists can interact with it via a nice little Discord chatbot. I was pretty excited to go there to be invited and to see what's going on in the world that's outside of my usual habitat. Automated defense. This, this is Laura, um, the, the uh, I think, chief organizer, <laughs> the chief actual of... actual making stuff happen at, at the <laughs> festival, not just programming or, yeah. or arting. One of them, just okay. one of them. <laughs> nice. So what's the... What is the festival all about? If you had to summarize it. Okay, festival is about how to understand artificial intelligence with the, the way of art and how to democratize the comprehension of impact of artificial intelligence for all people. You have artists here, you have kids camps, we had speeches, we had panels and so on. Is there a theme, an overall theme that pulls through all of it? For all of that, the festival is organized by Impact AI Foundation and for us what is important is to see how uh, artificial in intelligence impact the workflow of uh, work on environment and how is impact and transform the work mm -hmm. and for that we are thinking if you take the the way of art it's more easy to understand what is the impact for me if i can see uh, an artist work with ai uh, what means for me if i don't be an artist but i work if they can work with ai how can I do that uh, too yeah. and to go away from uh, from uh, have fear of AI and to to have the the empowerment uh, with these technologies so this is in, this is we're here in Geneva yeah and it's not over now right until when can people come and visit the exhibits and it's not over it's the beginning yeah <laughs> um, the the festival is um, it's continuous until uh, 31 of Oct October and it's the first edition next year same time same place probably we have the second edition and we we will have in probably five or six years have this type of festival in all parts of the world to discuss about the impact of artificial intelligence for people and for transform all the society for a, a, a society for good common with AI cool thank you so much thank you Yannick This is this is this is Tim, technical chief of the festival. Could you tell us a little bit what is Chimera? Okay. The idea was that we wanted to provide contemporary artists with deep learning tools, take artists that never worked with AI or deep learning or really computers much at all, and to see if we could actually make these tools creative. I mean, mm -hmm. as an engineer, when you play with GPT-2 or 3 or, or J, you think this is great, it creates fantastic tests, this is so funny, but does it actually work with people who, are, you know, whose profession is to be creative? And that's what we wanted to find out. And we had the opportunity to take the, the whole multi-model set 
set of, of, uh, of networks that we have nowadays. So you can do the text generation, but also image generation using clip and, uh, and diffusion models. And you have music generation with jukebox. So we wanted to try bring all these together and connect them as much as possible into a single entity and provide it to the artist in a way that wouldn't look like, say, a collab, would be something they could relate to yeah. and interact with. So you've made a Discord bot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's pretty I'm cool. I'm so proud. Yeah. So it, there is clip guided diffusion, which we've seen in the images. There is also text, a text model. Can, can you speak a bit about how the text model comes to be? Because the artists have also told me that it learns over time and so on, which is, is not typical for a, if I just use GPT-3, every prompt is independent. Right. Initially, we thought we'd we'll start with GPT-3, the, the, the Da Vinci model, yeah. because we needed some kind of data set to bootstrap the, the conversation model. Because if you try GPT-G or GPT-2 as a conversation model out of the box, you don't really get anywhere. You need somehow to give it enough data to, to be able to, with, to hold conversations properly. We did a backstory and a prompt bootstrap, and that got them talking with GPT-3. Then after a few days, we had enough data to train GPT-G, and fortunately, Hugging Face had this model integrated into their toolset yeah. around the same time. So it was actually quite straightforward and then every day we collect the, the data set from the artists so the conversations mm -hmm. the generations they'd done plus any data sets they'd uploaded via the discord bot that we'd bring together and integrate into the overnight training and so the trick is because these data sets are quite small you want to fine-tune really likely with a low learning rate yeah. and, and also not too many epochs so 10 15 epochs you, you get enough impregnation of the data set into the model but not too much so that it memorizes really everything yeah. strongly i was i was surprised by the breadth of stuff you got out of these models there is music there's pictures there's poems there's also wallpaper designs yeah it, it's pretty cool to see just how much stuff people can get out of what for, to us are language models or convolutional nets or something like this yeah <laughs> This is uh, Jonathan uh, from from the festival. That is a, a non-humanoid artificial intelligent robot. Although I don't really like the term artificial intelligence. It's more uh, a machine that can learn. Uh, how it works is um, it has an actor critic. So the actor tries things. So basically it can activate the motors. There are nine motors, one for each wheel. And these wheels are a bit special because they're Omnidirectional wheels because it, it because we chose to put it in a on, on three wheels on three axles so one of the wheels needs to be able to roll freely in some directions mm -hmm. while the others tracked it another three motors for the axles so the cube can move along the axles and with the wheels so the the cube <coughs> the cube can move the cube can move along these things yeah exactly okay so it's got a bunch of controllers like a a, a central controller, which is a, a, an NVIDIA Jetson Xavier. And then it's got a bunch of small Jetson Nanos to do uh, to, for the cameras. It's got six cameras, one on each side. So we really made this complicated for ourselves because we wanted to make a non-humanoid robot because we thought it was more interesting and we were hoping that it would kind of um, prevent people from projecting onto it. So we were hoping to limit anthropomorphism. Yeah. Um, that failed. <laughs> like people project onto any shape or form or anything, especially if it moves by itself. But we also wanted to prevent it from learning directly from humans. So it can see human movement. It has to sort of transpose it into its own capacity, into its own body. So what do the cameras do? They see, where does the image go? Right now, as it is, like we're, we're, we're finishing connecting that to the, to the main AI. So mm -hmm. right now what it does is it helps it recognize objects, basically. Then it's going to be able to use that. Okay, so we were working with David Rudraff, uh, um, a, a neuroscientist, and he's got this um, embodied consciousness mathematical model theory. Basically, it's kind of a, a based on uh, Lacan's um, idea that you build your personality by, and I'm not going to say this very well, <laughs> but you build your personality by um, what you perceive in the way other people look at you. Mm -hmm. It is called Lacan, 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 Lacanian mirror. And they, they have a, a, a mathematical model of that and we want to be able to try and, um, and see what happens when we put that into, into Dai's um, AI. So far, we're, we're, not, we're not quite there. We're and now it's there. broken. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> it. I mean, every time you move forward, you, you jump back. You know, <laughs> I mean, robotics is a, is a, it's a, painful, uh, it's a painful business. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also fascinating because, I mean, right now it's a small problem, right? I mean, these two batteries are too old and they've suffered a bit and um, they've over-discharged and they've inverted their polarity, which I guess they could have caught fire, they didn't. <laughs> 
so now I just need to replace those two and it'll be back on its wheels. So the actor critic works like this. It's got like the actor who tries activating all of the motors and the critic which encourages it or discourages it to continue in that direction. As we wanted it to learn its own movements by itself, we didn't want to give it like directions, like say, okay, when we tested it, we, we, we turned it on and we said like, we just wrote a short script for, for, to reward a circle of three meters diameter. And really quickly it managed to like learn how to do a almost perfect circle with it. And it's quite complicated with the three wheels. Like if you try like remote controlling it yourself, it's super difficult to make it go straight at all. We figured out that it worked and um, we wanted to give it like the most basic rewards that you could um, to encourage it to discover. So we chose angular displacement. We thought that's great. Everything's an angular displacement in this model. Like when the cube moves up and down, it's an angular displacement. When the wheels are activated, it's an angular displacement. Seems fine. We turned it on for the first show. Uh, actually, nothing happened. So I was talking for like two and a half minutes. It was actually using Raspberry Pis for everything at the time. So it was really slow to boot and, uh, and a bit slow to, to move. But that's the thing. The technology has been moving so quickly that now it's actually got powerful brains and stuff. Anyway, here was I talking to people saying, probably something's happening. There's maybe electricity flowing, but not enough. And something will activate soon and after two and a half minutes like the longest two and a half minutes of my existence suddenly one of these wheels just went and everybody was like wow you know that was really funny because it's like when you see a, a kid walk for the first time everybody's amazed but it's just you know it's just not falling basically falling yeah. and catching yourself but suddenly you've learned something new and do you plan to have it interact with humans like with the cameras and the sonar or yeah that's what we're trying to get to right now i mean yeah. it's um, as it is it can do movements so it yeah. can explore space and um, and explore its movements in the new space i mean it's really interesting to see what happens when it's on different surfaces mm -hmm. when you bring it to a new space if it's a carpet yeah then it's got lots of grip and it needs um or maybe the carpet bundles up and it needs to add loads of power so when it gets onto a s slippier floor the wheels spin but really yeah. quickly actually it adapts to that this is uh claire claire is one of the artists here who uh <laughs> who worked with chimera yeah right? that's the chimera name. is a language model retrained every night as i understand so you I can think so. input stuff back into the ai yes okay yes. there's also an image i think this is clip guided diffusion you know that makes these images this is it. also chimera but i okay. can I don't have the technical we have the two there. we have the two the two things yeah. one does language and one does language to pictures right yes and there's also so the language is both chatting and generating text do it both. can do both yeah. I struggled a lot how come um, I think for the chatting it soon came to a kind of end or yeah. limits after which I didn't really know what to do yeah. or how to interact anymore and I would reset it all the time yeah yeah I would just spend my time resetting and they get camera. a bit <laughs> and it, like this they get a bit repetitive <clears throat> right and a bit predictable yes but what I did is that I gave Chimera uh, a text I wrote yeah. five years ago about a character I invented and the structure of this text is very repetitive so then Chimera could really produce more text with yeah. my character, which was at the beginning quite good. Really could have been written by me. And I don't know why after two or three days it became really, really <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah. The thing is with Chimera, she keeps, or she or whatever, <laughs> um, I call her she because, because in course. French, Chimera is, a, is okay. a feminine. Yeah, the thing is that she keeps generating dialogues, probably because we interact with her. Yeah. Um, Via dialogue. Yeah. yeah. My texts really don't have dialogues. I see. She starts by really understanding what I want, or I mean, <laughs> pretend that she yeah. understands what I want. And then after a while, she just uh, invents dialogues. And <laughs> it's really not what I would have written. So that's why I invented this uh, psychobot, yeah. which is um, the psychologist robot my okay. character has, which will be featuring here when we can make the demo work. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can people interact with your psychologist in any way? It might happen. For the moment, it's only my character who okay. interacts with it. And I'm not sure yet how my character really interacts with it. Okay, so you don't know what's gonna happen? No. <laughs> you know, we, there, there was a story a few weeks ago where people built therapists based on this technology 
And one of the therapists told one of the patients to kill themselves. That's actually what happened when I really used it as a real psychologist. Okay. <laughs> and I said, ah, well, I pretended I was so sad <laughs> and I was really depressed and I'm asking if it could help me. Yeah. And after a while, the, yeah, it just said, okay, then I think the best way is to kill yourself. <laughs> and that's where I realized I should use it another way. <laughs> Otherwise, this would happen all the time. <laughs> it's like a real therapist. They always try to get you to solve your own problems, yeah, exactly. right? <laughs> oh, okay. It's possessed. I found that concentrating on the negative aspects of life can be helpful for feeling better. <laughs> this, this seems very counter to... And? <laughs> Would it do that often, that it switches topics? Okay. Can learn from itself. Wow. And Olga is your character. Yeah. And so the therapist would know about your character. What's up with the, with the dresses? So this is Maria's project. So Maria's at home and she created an opera. So they designed all the opera and the clothes and the costumes and the, the lyrics for the opera together. And so that's the picture, pictures generated by Chimera. And these are wallpapers. <laughs> so these are wallpapers that generated are, by Chimera. Generated by Chimera, which I used for my videos. People love flowers on their <laughs> wallpapers. Well, did this you word, say? Yeah, did I always you say? said flower, ah. flower pattern wallpaper. This is very artsy, I have to say. <laughs> this is, you know, on YouTube we cut at least every three and a half seconds or so because people have no attention span. All the episodes are very boring. They last, they last between three and four minutes, and nothing happens except for background changing. <laughs> it could, it could, you know, ASMR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is a, a source of inspiration for my work, actually. What's up with the hanging phone? So, ah. it's only to, to read it better. And this here is, Tim said, it's a stream of consciousness. Yes, and I have no idea exactly what this is something I haven't worked on. So I think it might be images that were generated by Chimera, morphing into other images, or it's just a process of All in all, I spent three days at the AIIA festival. I was part of five different panels and it was pretty intense, but it was also pretty cool. I'm not an artsy person at all, so this was a really new world for me. And it gave me a bit of an insight into how people outside of academia, outside of the field, could make use of AI in the near future. It seems like these new generative models can be really cool as creative assistants to artists and anyone having to do creative work. So with all of that, I got myself on the train home. I hope you enjoyed this little trip report and I'll see you next video. Thank you so much to the organizers of the AIIA festival for inviting me and for providing me with such a cool experience.